So it's the day after placement. The same as last week, I was so tired at the end of the shift. I didn't get home till quarter to 10. It was way too late to vlog. So here I am the next day, I'm day off, yes. I've been revising with my day. By the time you watch this, it's gonna be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So placement. On Friday, I'm not gonna lie, last week I didn't do a lot. We had, I think, nine patients and about three nurses. That's quite a lot. So, or was it 12 patients? It might have been 12 patients, sorry. 12 patients and three nurses, so that, that's quite a good ratio. Um, so I was sort of a bit lost because everything was okay, nothing went wrong. Nothing really had to be done, just the, the main patient care, observations, um, medications, but I haven't done anything unusual that I haven't done on other placements yet. So that was last week. And then yesterday, okay, where do I start with yesterday? So yesterday we went round, we did our medication round in the morning. And then if there was anyone left to get up and dressed, I helped them to get up and dressed and washed. And then I went on a break, I come back, I went round and did all of the observations and then spent time with the patients, sat and spoke with them for a while. And then after that, it was lunchtime. Lunchtime is between 12 and one. We help residents to eat if they need assistance. We do that, um, do medications. And then we had a very poorly patient. So during lunchtime, I did this one patient's observations i did his blood pressure his temperature his respiratory rate his pulse all of that jazz and it was a little bit off he was scoring a four now if you are familiar with the news charts that we document all of this on if you score a four or more it has to be escalated and then the observations are then done hourly to make sure this patient's okay to rec recognize for any more deterioration basically so i was like oh scoring a four okay sorted I got, went and got my mentor, I showed her the chart, I said, his respiratory rate's off, his pulse is high, his oxygen's okay, but it's sort of on the low side of okay. What are we gonna do? And his temperature was up. So, okay, she said, check his observations again in an hour, we'll see how he is. So then I checked again in an hour, another hour, another hour. So it was from four to a four to a five, to a seven, to a eight, to a nine, to a 10. 10! <laughs> 10 he was at so I was like oh my god this patient's now at a 10 not only that he's vomiting wow so then I ran to my mentor again I said you're not gonna be happy with this no don't kill me <laughs> but the patient's scoring a 10 now he's really poorly and then luckily she's already called the doctor she was on the ball my mentor was on the ball she'd already called the doctor made him aware so then the doctor come along I luckily had done a few things for him ready because as we were taught at university, always try and be one step ahead of the doctor so that when the doctor arrives, you're saving time. So instead of waiting for the doctor to say, okay, get a urine sample, okay, get a finger prick test or blood testing, any x-rays, whatever, you have to be one step ahead and think, okay, what will the doctor require of me and get it ready. So I went and I got the urine sample. I thought ahead, just thought, get the urine sample because it could be a urine infection. His temperature's up, so there's some sort of infection somewhere. That's what that tells us. So I did that. We can't physically do blood tests as a student nurse, so I couldn't do the blood test. So the doctor did that. He had all the stuff ready. The doctor did a blood test. And luckily the patient had already had some other observations that day done, so we didn't have to do those. So that was a bonus. And then the doctor had a look at the patient, assessed the patient, listened to the patient's chest and did all of his assessment on the patient. And he's prescribed some antibiotics. He said it could be a possible chest infection. So yeah, so my doctor prescribed the antibiotics for the patient, which we give straight away. The doctor cannulated the patient. Their antibiotics were in within five minutes of the doctor assessing him. So that was happened. And then by the end of the day, he went from a 10 to an eight again. So he did come down a little bit, but his respiratory rate was still high, his temperature was still high. And then because he was on oxygen with the new news two charting, you always score for oxygen. So he was scoring for that. So his observation were still high, and but I did leave the shift happy knowing that the patient is already on antibiotics and he's been treated. And hopefully today I'm off so I can't, see what's happening but hopefully today my patient's going to be okay and hopefully I'm going to go in tomorrow and he's going to be well happy and scoring hopefully a zero 
We'll see what happens tomorrow, but I will let you know and I will update you tomorrow with what's going on. So that patient took up all of my day because he then went, because he was scoring such a high news chart score, we had to then monitor him every 30 minutes. So I was routinely with him. And then by the time you finished the observations, you've only got like 20 minutes left and then you have to go back and do the observations. And I had to keep apologizing to the patient. I was like, I'm so sorry. I'm gonna have to do your blood pressure again and again and again until you're better because your observations are off. And as long as you explain everything to the patient, the patient is marvelous. The patient was okay with all of that, thank God. But I, I was kept really, really busy right up until the last minute of my shift when I did his last set of observations before I left. So yeah, so that was a busy day. But what it has made me realize is I really enjoy taking care of poorly, poorly patients. I don't know if that means anything I don't know I love all of my patients but I really enjoy putting the theory into practice so everything I learn from university I love putting it into practice and I love that assessment and judging patients deterioration and recognizing the signs and the symptoms and knowing what to do it makes my day when you can do that and you can physically assess a person you think I get this I understand this the penny drops is the most magical moment of all and it's something that I really really love and I find myself that's where I'm in my element and I don't know what this means but I love it so today is Friday and you have to excuse this real student look that I've got I'm in my PJ still and I don't plan on moving today. <laughs> I plan on recruiting the full slob mode all day. Um, it is my day off, I've got three days off now. I've got Friday, Saturday and Sunday and then I'm back Monday and then I've got another few days off ready for the exam. So I'm gonna fully plan on relaxing and spending some time out this weekend. And yeah, cause, because I am exhausted. I went back to placement and my patient was better. He was so much better. Oh, it was so nice to see that the antibiotics had kicked in, his temperature had come down, his respiratory rate had come down, his oxygen levels were good on air, not even oxygen. Oh, it's the best feeling in the world when you see that happen in your patient. It's amazing. You'll have to excuse me for a minute because <laughs> I've got a friend who keeps distracting me. Let me show you Dylan. Dylan, you've been a good boy. What do you want? What do you want? Where's your toy then? Get your toy. Go on then. Good boy. Sorry about that. We're back to it. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm spending the weekend with a couple of dogs. It's going to be fantastic. Dogs are really therapeutic, don't you think? I absolutely love dogs. If you've got a dog, let me know what dog you've got, what their name is, how much you love them, let me know. So yes, back to it. So my patient was amazing. I was so chuffed to see that he was all right. As soon as I went in on shift, I checked and asked about him. So it makes you worry when you have a day off and you don't know how the patient is after they've been so poorly. So it was really nice to go back and see that he was actually doing really well. So that made him a day. So what else have I done? So on Wednesday, I did... So I did some wounds, I did two wounds, one was a pressure sore on somebody's hip and the other one was a, a nice skin tear on the leg, which is a really juicy one because it was previously infected, not so good for the patient but really good for me to see and we had a bit of trouble sort of getting the, the old dressing off because it had stuck to the wound a little bit. It was good for me to sort of have that challenge and try and get the previous dressing off without hurting the patient even more, doing more damage to that wound. So we literally just threw a load of saline onto it and just had to try and peel it off bit by bit. Luckily the patient wasn't in pain and it went well and we redressed it and it was amazing. So anybody who does aseptic technique to do their wound dressings, which most people should be doing, does anyone else have the problem where you can't get your gloves on? Because you have to do it in a way where you're not touching the gloves, so you have to try and get it on for those of you who haven't done it yet. And it always ends up a mess, like your fingers are like this, and you're like, I did it perfectly earlier when no one was watching me, but now that somebody's watching me, my glove has gone to pot. <laughs> 
what's happened? I saw a really good post which I posted on Twitter and um, on my Instagram story. I'm gonna put it here so you can see it and that's exactly what happens and I thought that post was just so funny because it's so relevant, it did make me laugh. So other than wounds, my mentor gave me a discharge letter to do which I'd never done before. I've assisted with discharges and I've had a look at the discharge process and things but I've never been left to my own devices to do this on my own. So I did that, that was really, really good. I was sort of panicking a little bit because I was like, I haven't done this before. I don't 100% know what I'm doing, but just from what I've been taught at uni and looking at the notes and making sure he's medic this patient was medically fit for discharge, making sure everything's in place, the TTOs are in place, the transport's booked, any referrals to district nurses and everything, they are all booked. Luckily, everything was done for this patient, so I just had to fill in a form. I'm sure at some point I'm going to have to make those referrals and do everything for the patient. I'm sure they're going to get me to do that by the end of my placement. So that's going to be really, really good and interesting for me to do because I haven't done that side of things yet. I've never done a referral, so it's really, really nice to do new things. Always makes me day. And then yesterday, so yesterday I was at the Birmingham City football ground because we had our student forum there. I've never had a student forum in a football ground. It was amazing. So we were there nine till four and it was a proper training session. It was really, really good. The first half of the day was all about lymphedemia, which I knew sort of roughly what it was, but not much. And it was really good to learn about that and know about that. And I might actually do a separate vlog on that because it was really interesting for me to to gain more knowledge on that. And I think it'll be really interesting to do a video so that other people can be more aware about it and how to manage that patient effectively if you've got a patient like that. And then the second half of the day after lunch, we had all about clinical supervision. So clinical supervision is something that we have. It's a part of re-validation more so than anything. You have to do it as part of your re-validation every three years with the NMC, where you sit down with your clinical supervisor. It's another nurse that's a clinical supervisor, basically. And they will go through a sort of reflection with you. So it's a time to reflect on your practice and talk about anything that you need to talk about. And... Um, to help you grow personally and professionally I think so it was a really good session and then after that I have come down towards London Way to spend the weekend with these dogs as I said and I'm gonna chill out and that's your lot for this week I hope that's been okay next week is my exam and I'm hoping I'm ready for it I've been revising solid I've been revising every single day going over and over and over this so I'm praying that come the exam I'm going to remember it, it's going to stick and I'm going to be okay and hopefully not run out of time for this exam because it's a lot of writing in two and a half hours but I'll let you know next week guys. If you're on my social media I will put it on social media, I'll put it on my Instagram story, I'll put it on Twitter and I'll vlog. Me and Pooja at university we usually have a little routine that before an exam we always do a little video so I'm going to grab Pooja in. If Poudre, if you're watching this, be warned. I'm coming for you on Thursday and we're going to have a cry together. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I'll see you all next week, guys. I hope you have an amazing week. Keep smiling. Keep being amazing. And if you're having a rough time, if you're stressed, you can do this. Get motivated. You can do this. We're in this together. And have a great week. <music>
and it was just amazing we've done quite a lot we've raised a lot of money for cabal trust we're looking to do our international nurses day bake sale at the university to raise some more money for cabal trust we're going to do snowden again this year because we didn't get to the peak last year because of storm callum as you'll see in the video but it's a really funny video please watch it if you haven't watched it yet um and so we're going to do that again we're going to smash it so it's really really exciting it's exciting times as a team we're really really excited about this and it's going to be really nice and motivating evening it's just amazing to be nominated i'm not expecting to win anything but i'm going for the food you know me <laughs> there's free food free drink i am there it's the way to lure me into events okay guys get on the free food so there's going to be a really good spread like last year hopefully come on bcu do us proud um so that's why i'm going i'm gonna get the free food have a really nice social evening take the time out and have a nice little evening with my team and it's gonna be amazing i'm really excited so i spoke far too much long about this these awards so anyway that's it from me i'm actually going now i shall see you all next week have a great week guys mm -hmm.